I'd like to welcome everybody to Ignite the Spark. My name is Shar Spektakniak. I am the founder and CEO of what's called Horizons for Girls. And what we do is we mentor middle school and high school students throughout Sheboygan County and really try to help them on this journey that we call life, which Sometimes I'm not sure any of us know for sure what it really is, but I always like to share different resources that help the families and help the students. Uh, I'm excited today because I get to have a conversation with what's turned out to be a very good friend of mine, um, and she started as a mentor. And I'm going to let you introduce yourself, who you are, where you came from, and how the heck you ended up on the doorstep of Horizons for Girls. Um, uh, I'm Samantha Chapa. I um, started in uh, the military. I was in the military for 10 and a half years and uh, had gotten medically retired and uh, had to have surgery throughout that time or throughout a period needed something to do, so I was looking up uh, volunteer opportunities and came across your ad for needing a mentor. Uh, at the time, I was currently going through, uh, or I was a biomedical engineer, completely different uh, or avenue of my career choice, but um, started uh, volunteering for you and uh, found that I had a lot of passion for what I was doing. and. Uh, from there on. Yeah, and I, oh, what I found interesting is I think at some point you started, you know, contemplating, okay, I've got this be military benefit for my e education, Correct. but what is it I want to do? And I think that's when, you know, we start having some conversations about going into that field of social work of some sort to try and help the students uh, with what they're going through. Correct. Right. I found a real connection with the young ladies and that not only was I helping them, but they were helping me to uh, figure myself out and how to become a better person, what I wanted to do with myself. And if I can find that in myself, I feel I can find that with the other girls and try to help them as much as I can. Uh, definitely, to me, it's a challenge every day um, you know when you start to look at the background of mm. some of these students and the trauma that they've gone through yep. whether that's uh, divorce um, you know family issues abuse uh, even just basic study skills right. I mean definitely a, a lot of things that they're trying to go through a lot of juggling uh, a lot of issues um, and I guess, you know, and that's what we call it, what we do, igniting a spark. Right. You know, because it's like a treasure hunt. We're trying to figure out what it is they might be interested in. Right. You know, and once you can capture whatever that is, uh, the salesperson in me says, aha, I've got gotcha. you. Yep. You know, I, th I think of like um, Haley, and she gets excited about working on cars yes. and she has job shadowed twice in a uh, mechanical garage at a dealership yep. and loved it you know so whether that ends up being her career or not you know she definitely is being able to delve into something maybe she wasn't thinking of and I think that's important exactly I, I agree they um sometimes they don't know where to turn you know where to where to find that, that spark, and I really appreciate being able to assist them with that. I mean, it could be conversations that are completely silly or, you know, really serious conversations, but just being there for them to listen, to understand, and use the compassion and love that I know they need, and it, it's that simple to, to just be there for them. Yeah, and that's, that's really what I try and tell people when they're, when they're considering being a mentor is you don't have to have the answers. Mm. You know, just listen. 
you know, be that listening ear mm -hmm. so they can vent and they can bounce ideas off of you because when they do that, they're going to start to figure out what it is they want to do. Um, I think of Carrie mm -hmm. and, you know, now she is one of our, she's already graduated from the program. Now she's being trained to become a peer-to-peer -peer mentor. Right. You know, she has said, ah, oh, I think I'm starting to figure it out. I love that when you can start to see that light bulb go on. Right. Off. It's like, ha ha. That transition is, really is amazing. It's it just the ability for them to have gone through everything they've gone through already and come out on the end with such a positive attitude. I think that's the best part to take away from it, of course, is seeing the results. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's, you know, I think back of when I was a teenager and I think of the struggles I might have, you know, gone through. And I look at now what the students are going through and it's, it's really, really tough. You know, the, the social media, I mean, I was caught a news story, I think yesterday, the state of Illinois is thinking of trying to pass a law that says that sexting has to be part of their uh, sex education course. And I'm going, wow. Yeah. That's that, is, that is really, I mean, if you're already teaching internet safety mm -hmm. and you're teaching sex education, right. I don't know that you have to go into detail right that, about that. something they shouldn't be doing to begin with but that, that's and you know and that's what they're seeing and that's what we're here to I think to dissuade them from like feeling pressured to have to do that kind of stuff you know we I think as mentors we can we can show them that you can have a perfectly amazing happy life and not have to you know dig into all this the bad stuff that, that's coming from this social media, whether it's, you know, body image or whether it's uh, peer pressure, wh whatever it is. They, I think just being there for them and listening, it gives them a chance to really see that there's other avenues than what social media is, is expecting of them. I think so. You know, and I think of the last two summers when we've gone camping. <laughs> And the first time that crossed my mind, I'm going, uh, I don't know, are these girls going to get excited about camping? Right, and right. And they do. Yes. And it, they love it, and it's fun. So. And it's keeping know. it simple. Like, you know, just keep, even cooking and stuff like that, I, I would think, oh, they're not going to uh, get excited about this. Or the walks through Maywood when I take the girls for a, a bunch of nature walks. At first, I'm like, well, they're going to have their phones on them. They're going to be staring at that. But then once we actually get into it and start walking and I start pointing out, hey, look at this, look at this, um, they do. They go back to that childlike uh, uh, simplicity and, and get excited about seeing the flower or the, the animals, whatever it is. It's, it's just very reassuring to, to see that they that can come back to, to such a simple, pleasant like so. Well, and, and I think, um, as you were just talking about me, what I was thinking of something that I remember as a kid, and I haven't done it in quite a while, is where you just grab a blade of grass and put it between your thumbs, yeah. and you'd blow and you'd make it, it would vibrate and it would whistle, and that was fun. Right. So, you know, something so simple that as a grandmother, I still would find fascinating. Right. It's fun. It's relaxing. Yep. You know, and I think mindfulness, that's something that we, you know, that we've really started to work with the girls about yep. is finding ways to just bring it down and, you know, you don't, you don't need to worry about everything at the same time. Exactly. Staying in the present moment um, in, in, I've been doing a lot of research or a lot of uh, reading on this, as you've known. I think I talk about it quite a bit. But, you know, anything that you worry about in the past, you know, it's not going to affect what you can do right now. The future can only be determined by the present. And it's something that I, I try to teach my own child, something that I feel like is very important to the young ladies because a lot of the stuff they did in the past or they have 
have been through in the past is it's just been really hard on them. And, you know, they don't have to stay there. They can, they can do whatever they need to in the present to stay content and happy and, and make the choices that are going to be better for them right now that will affect their future. And I'm so glad that, you know, this mindfulness thing is creating or is becoming this blown up thing in the world because it just it needs to happen in order for people to, to stay present with themselves and grounded. Well, one of, one of the other things that they, they decided to do this year is that they wanted to do 100 acts of kindness yes. in 50 weeks. <laughs> so that means an average of two every week. And I said, okay, it's fine. It's your project, yeah. you know. And they've been coming up with some incredible ideas of what they want to do. I mean, they they bake bars to take to the fire station, um, and the the one thing that we do every year that they always have fun with is, this past Christmas we were at Rocky Knoll, mm -hmm. and we were delivering cookies. Um, it was over 500 cookies that we took out there and we delivered room to room. And it was, it was very emotional um, for the volunteers, for the staff at Rocky Knoll, for the girls. Mm -hmm. um, because we'd come up to a room, the, the staff would knock on the, on the door and would announce that that we were there to, to give them some Christmas cookies and then we'd be invited in. You'd go into a room where the only light in that room was what was coming from the TV screen. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was the first weekend in December and they're in this basic dark room yeah, yeah. all by themselves, you know, so then, um, we came in, the girls offered them some cookies, handed them a napkin. Uh, then the residents would start to share their memories of the holidays. Wow. And they would have conversations with the students. And all of a sudden the resident is crying and the staff is crying <laughs> and I'm crying and the girls are crying. And it was very, very emotional on the way back from there in the van, several girls were talking about how uh, they really, it bothered them that these people were out there all alone. And you know, here it is so close to Christmas and they don't have somebody coming to see them. They don't have it, maybe, maybe their family's gone or further away, yeah. but they, they definitely, they're feeling depressed because big deal, it's Christmas, it's just another day, right. you know, at this nursing home. That's it, whoopee. Yeah. Um, and the girls were saying, this will never, ever happen to my family. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, okay, you guys are starting to get it. Family is important. As mad as you might get about what your mother said to you this exactly. morning. Yep. Guess what? You, mom is family. So that to me was very powerful to see that happen. The true definition of igniting the spark. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Without a doubt. And putting it out with tears? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, it, you know, and, and of course, Faith, who you see wandering around it by her feet, she was out there with us. And then uh, the residents would tell us stories maybe about a pet mm -hmm. that they had when they were growing up. Um, it, was, it was very emotional, but the girls really enjoyed it. The other one I'm thinking of is when they went to the fire station, and that was funny because they baked apple cobbler mm, and we right. got into the van <laughs> and dropped the apple cobbler upside down <laughs> in the van. So, so much for delivering that day. Right. But then the next day we went and we bought some cookies. Perfect. And we delivered the cookies to the fire station. And they thought that was cool because the fire, the fire and I want to say fireman, except there was a female firefighter. Yep. And they got to talk with her and, and with the other staff and they got to see the fire station. Amazing. And they began to understand what that means to keep 
us safe. Yep. You yep. know, those people are there on call. You know, they're not with their family. Mm -mm. Yeah. I mean, and they're, this is something they can aspire to. And that's what I find great, too, is uh, mentoring and, and showing them. Um, they do job shadowing, yes. as you had mentioned, and they're really able to kind of get a taste of what is out there and what they can achieve if they just maintain their productivity. <laughs> well, exactly. And I, I, I'm thinking of one young lady who uh, now is actually studying law, mm -hmm. wants to become an attorney. And I remember first conversations with her and she said, well, I think I want to be an attorney. And I'm going, okay, mm -hmm. why? And she goes, because I want to go into the courtroom and I want to win the argument. Nice. Well, yeah. this young lady was in foster homes from birth. And, you know, imagine that, that you're in a foster home and you come home from school that day and the social worker's there and says, ah, guess what, we're moving you to a different yeah, foster exactly. home today. You have no control over what's happening to you. You know, and I forget how many different foster homes she said she was in until she was finally adopted. I think she was 17 years old when wow. the family fostering her adopted her to make sure that that stopped. Right. Uh, but, you know, to keep pursuing what you think you want to be. Yes, and have people to support you in, in doing that. I mean, I, I feel... Um, some of these girls aren't surrounded by, by support that, that encourages them to, to be their best. And I, I find that actually the most important is just the ability to support them in anything that, anything they want to do, whatever, what, regardless of what it is. Well, I know a couple of girls have even talked to you about possibly going into military. Correct, yep. You know, um, now... Tell me a little bit more. You're you're going to UW Milwaukee. Yep, going what? to UW Milwaukee now. Um, had uh, graduated from UW Sheboygan um, two years ago, but then uh, needed to pursue it to go for my bachelor's and um, have been working on a lot of social work courses. And currently, I'm getting myself set up to intern at Rays which is uh, Runaway Youth Services with uh, youth Lutheran Social Services. Right. Mm -hmm. Great program. Right. And uh, before that, I was volunteering at uh, Safe Harbor, which is for domestic abuse and sexual assault victims. Uh, prior to that, Senior Center. I've, I've been, ever since I've been able to start this program, Char, I have volunteered with so many programs, and it's just, it really has made me a better person not only for, you know, myself, but for everyone around me. Well, and the, I guess that, that when I'm talking to uh, young professionals and they're, they're so focused on their career, I've got to get my career, I've got, you know, I've got to become the CEO of right. my own company, whatever it might mm. be. And it's like, I'm sorry, volunteering, doing whatever it is, maybe it's at the food bank, sorting food donations. I don't care. Right. Uh, but, you know, get involved because that puts you in touch with your community. Exactly. And that, that to me is huge, you know. Um, and I think that's something when I talk to the girls and we talk about, you know, they say, well, I have no control over what's happening. And it's like, yeah, you do. Yes. You know, go out there and make a difference. You know, I think of uh, actually, I think it was Karamee that came up with the idea there was a fire a couple of years ago. And one of the students knew, some, knew one of the families that was in that fa fire. Mm -hmm. And so we went door to door and we collected clothing wow. for that family. They packed the van solid, full, <laughs> floor, to, floor to ceiling, oh, and it, you know, from all the way back right up to the driver's seat. It was solid packed with, with clothes. Wow. And there were, there were personal care products, and there were some food items. It was, it was just solid packed, and they, they were so proud of making a difference. And I said, see, you can. You right. can make a difference. Exactly. Uh, and uh, I think 
perhaps that's one thing that, that often bugs me is everyone's like, I'm only one person. I can't do anything. Well, if everyone said that, then of course, no one, you, you wouldn't get anywhere. Just be that one person to make a difference, regardless how small or big it is. It's, it's compassion and love for our community. It's how we create an enlightened society to, to help our kids down the road and make a, make a better life for themselves. Uh, you know, another, another one of the students I'm thinking of, Abby, who was out of, the, out of the program for several years, now is studying to give her CNA. Mm. You know, she's been working part-time in a group called the Disabled People. Wow. And, and I always sensed that she wanted to help other people. She wanted to fix everything. <laughs> so when, when she got that job, I went, oh, perfect. She can, she can help people and now she's encouraging me she wants me to bring faith there mm -hmm. uh, to do a visit uh, with the residents but being able to find that ah, I can mm -hmm. make a difference that's huge and I mean and it all it, it just starts there and it keeps spreading and spreading and it's really that simple and I mean I mean it's not simple to all they've been through a lot but once they recognize that they are their decisions and their their compassion, I mean, it's endless. Yeah. You know, and I mean, the statistics, I could go on yeah. and on and on about how mentoring makes a difference. It makes better employees. It makes, makes a product, more productive workforce. Um, we've got one mentor, um, that works for a company that actually pays her for her time wow. when she's with us. Um, I think of United Way and the uh, day of caring that they do in the fall. And we're part of that every year. And those companies are paying their staff right. to volunteer for that whole day. Exactly. You know? <laughs> And, and those staff that get so excited and so proud of what they accomplish. I think of last year when they were painting signs for our 5K to stop bullying. Oh, right, yeah. And, and they were having a ball. Mm -hmm. And here's, you know, CEOs and uh, human resource people sitting at a table painting yard signs that we put up to promote our event. They had a ball, right. and I love the fact that we could promote our <laughs> event, which was great. Yes, without a doubt. You know, I and I want to encourage people when when they see this, visit the website, look at the stuff. I mean, st the statistics are there, the events are there. Um, we've got we'll be doing our um, 5K again this year to try and stop bullying huge thing that that is in September I think it's the second Saturday in September it's part of a celebrate diversity mm -hmm. event which is pretty cool and in addition to kicking that event that Saturday off with our 5k what we do is we also do an ice cream social yep. every year mm -hmm. we work with Culver's they give us the frozen custard, and then we create typically three different ethnic toppings that people can put on their ice cream. I'm trying to remember, I think we had Italian, Mexican. Or an Asian. Asian, the, that was the other one, okay. But yeah, so I mean, the fun stuff like that that we can do. And it's in the community. I mean, uh, during that time, I mean, uh, when we're in the ice cream social, there's so many other, um, resources at Fountain Park or locally that are also joining. So it really connects and networks the whole community to, to kind of get involved. Yeah, I know I, I got an email yesterday. We will be doing face painting at the library. They do a spring something in March and we'll be doing face painting with that. Then they've got an Easter egg hunt oh, right. that they do in April and we'll be face painting then. So, you know, again, the students are trying to be out there involved in what's happening. Yes. 
Uh, we're in the 4th of July parade. Um, I hope in Bratwurst days. Yes, we work at Brat days. Um, so, you know, we're always out there, you know, so you can get as involved as you want to. Right. Uh, that's completely up to you. You know, I think of uh, Erica and a phenomenal artist, and I would love her to be with us more often, but I understand she's got a schedule. She travels a lot. Right. That's okay. She shares her talent, her skills with the girls. They love it. Right. Um, I've got mentors that started with us 10 years ago, and they still come back and do stuff. Um, mentors, especially when I think of Rocky Knoll, right. that event, um, we do that every year since we started. And there are mentors that that might be the only time they're with us, but right. they, and students, same thing. They say, can I still come? And it's like, you bet, definitely. Yeah. It's all part of giving back to the community, being a part of your community. Um, it just, it, it's huge. I, and it doesn't matter how large or small or what you feel that you have to contribute. Any, anything that, that can be contributed to encourage these young ladies to just, regardless, keep moving forward. Just yep. keep uh, living their best lives. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I've had um, oh, Melissa Mooney. She, oh, okay. is, uh, she is a national model right. from Sheboygan. She models for Harley Davidson. She's come, come yeah. and shared her insight with the students. I mean, you know, the people that I've been able to meet <laughs> because I scheduled them to come <laughs> and talk to the students, it's like, oh, I met that person. Yeah. You know, that's exciting, you know. So again, whatever your skill or your talent that you think you might have, you know, visit the website, find out ways to get involved because you want to be part of igniting the spark because exactly. that's what's going to make a difference for all of these young ladies, middle school, high school, throughout Sheboygan County. I invite you to take a look at what we do, be a part of what we do, mentor somebody. Come back and visit us again. I'm Shar with Horizons for Girls. I look forward to having you visit with us again. Thank you.